Good morning, my name is Jesse Culbertson. I'm a treatment team lead for the Regional Water Authority. Um, you are here on a virtual tour of our Whitney Water Treatment Plant and I'm going to take you around. I'm going to show you some of the processes and introduce you to some of the ways that we treat water from the Whitney Reservoir, which is across the street from the building that I'm currently in, and how it gets into our treatment plant, what we do to it, and how we send it out to you and to the public. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the building and the structure right now. Right now we're in the entryway. As you can see, it's a very interesting architect. It was uh, uniquely designed. It has the appearance of uh, the floor is a waterfall coming down here. And then on the, the walls have some unique textures. Uh, over here to the side, we have a concrete wall that's rough and unpolished, and that is to represent the raw or uncleaned water. And then behind me is the white finished wall, which is to represent the clean finished product, which we send out to the public. Um, so we're going to go look at some historical artifacts from the old Whitney treatment plant and then I'm going to take you and show you around some of our processes. Okay, so behind me we have some artifacts from the original Whitney water treatment plant that went online in 1903 and was taken offline uh, and demolished in 2001 but was taken offline in uh, 1996 and uh, then began the construction of this current Whitney water treatment plant, uh, which we're in right now. Uh, so behind me, we kept some artifacts. There's some old valves and some weights and some doors. You see this door right behind me. That is a door from the old filter room. And as you can see, uh, that was an exterior door, so it was not meeting the requirements and the standards uh, that we currently have now. And uh, those were one of the things that led to the development and the building of this current treatment plant. Um, so we're gonna start heading over into our process area. We're gonna go into our DAF uh, treatment area first, and then we're gonna just basically walk through the process from beginning to end of how we treat the water. Okay, so now we're in the DAF process area. This is where we first treat the water. Uh, physically, we introduce our primary coagulant chemicals, and what those do is they, uh, they remove dirt, uh, colors, anything that's in the water naturally that we don't want in the water for drinking, this is kind of where we remove it first. Um, so the DAF process is a little bit interesting of a treatment process. We have the raw water coming in through a pipe from across the street at the Whitney Reservoir. It comes through our building and it comes into these tanks behind us. So like I said, we introduce uh, our primary coagulant chemicals. We have the ability to adjust the pH either up or down depending on what the water is coming from the reservoir. And what the DAF process does, it introduces saturated air and water through nozzles that make tiny little air bubbles. And what those tiny little air bubbles do is they attach to the dirt and the particles along with our coagulant chemicals and it actually floats them up to the top. Um, and that is uh, very effective at removing organics, colors, turbidities, or particles in the water, tastes and odors. And then what we do is we scrape off the DAF and that goes into a holding tank and we process that through a centrifuge, which we use for beneficial reuse for things like potting soil or fertilizers or fills for that kind of stuff. And I'm going to show you guys a picture of the DAF process, what it looks like, what we do, and how it works. Okay, so this is our DAF process. What's happening right now is all that dirt and organics and particulate that's in the water is being floated out. And our skimming process is happening. So you can see over in that far corner, that's where the water comes in. That's where we have the uh, saturated air being introduced with nozzles. It's spraying up those tiny little air bubbles and then all the organics and all the particulate in the water are floating to the top. So what's happening right now is the skimming process is happening and these skimmer arms will just skim off all that into these troughs right here and that will go to our centrifuge eventually. Okay, so now we're in the ozone process area. Behind me is one of our ozone generators. We actually have two of them. What ozone is is we have a uh, it introduces ozone into the water, and what that does for us is it, it's a very strong oxidant, 
and a very powerful disinfectant. So we can achieve uh, four log removal uh, of any uh, bacteria, viruses, or anything that's in the water, and it inactivates it completely and uh, without introducing any other chemicals before our filtration process. Um, so how we make ozone is we have a uh, cryogenic liquid oxygen tank out, outside in the uh, parking lot area. And uh, what that does is it comes through a heat exchanger, it turns into gaseous oxygen, and then we introduce it into these generators. What those will do is it'll introduce a high current of electricity, and it'll convert it from oxygen into ozone. And then from there, it goes through a series of pipes into what we call our ozone contactor, and that's where we introduce it to the water. Um, so in this room, we have two of these ozone generators, and in a little bit, I'll show you what we do with the ozone after it's been introduced to the water. Okay, so behind me is our ozone destruct unit. We have two of them as well, along with two generators and two uh, ozone destruct units. So uh, what we have here is uh, the destruct. It'll actually pull with uh, like a, a vacuum. It'll pull the, the gaseous ozone out of the water. It'll go through these series of pipes coming up here and it'll reheat the ozone back up and it'll turn it back into oxygen and it gets released out onto the roof vents at the top of this building. And then after our ozone process, it goes into our filtration process where I'm gonna bring you next. Okay, so we're now in our filter process area. Behind me are four 24 by 25 feet filters. They have our, uh, an activated carbon in, in them. What those do is they help remove any particulate taste and odor and colors that are left over from our DAF and ozone process. So at this point, they're just about, the water's just about clean enough to be sent into the system. So after it goes through the filters, it'll go into uh, another tank where we pump it out into the system. And I'll show you guys a picture of what these filters look like. Okay, so here is a shot of one of our filters. As you can see, there's these pipes, or we call them troughs in the water. And what those are used for is to bring water into the filter, but they're also used for our backwashing process. So what a backwash is, is when these filters start to get a little dirty or to start to not perform as well, we'll actually take the filter offline so it will not be putting water into the system and we'll reverse flow through the filter with some very big pumps and that will actually clean up the filter. So that is called a backwashing process. And all that water goes into a tank which we use for a recycle. And I'll show you guys what's, what we do with that in a little bit. But we wash the water, it goes into a tank, and then after it's done washing, we start to fill it back up with water and we put the filter back online. So I showed you guys the filter, now we're into our, what we call our recycle system. So after a backwash, all that water goes into a tank. From that tank, it's actually pumped into our clarifying system. So what that clarifiers will do is they'll actually remove any of the particulate and dirt that's in that backwash water uh, without any chemicals. So the particles will um, hit the plates on these plate settlers and they will all float down. And what comes over the top of the clarifiers is relatively clean water. So what we do with that water is we actually pump it back to where the raw water pipe comes into the plant and we recycle all of our backwash water. So we don't waste any water here at the Whitney treatment plant, it all gets reused. So none of it goes into the sewer or into a, into a river or anywhere else, we reuse all of it. So here is one of our two clarifiers. So as you can see, there's water flowing up from the bottom through these clarifying plates and then coming over the top, it may be a little bit hard to see, but that is the water that gets sent back to the head of the plant for recycle. Okay, so I've shown you from how the water comes into our plant, what we do to it first, from DAF to ozone, then to our filtering process, and even a little bit of our recycle. So next what I'm gonna show you is kind of what we do during the daily stuff. We're gonna show you our lab. We're gonna show you where we perform all of our lab tests and keep track of the water and analyze the water quality from beginning to end. And I'm gonna show you some other pretty interesting parts about the building here at Whitney Treatment Plant. 
Okay, so now we're in our lab. This is where we analyze, test, and record all of our data from testing. Um, a lot of it is for compliance, but a lot of it also gives us knowledge on what treatment process we need to change, whether we need to go up or down on chemicals, or just the changing raw water quality coming from the reservoir. So in here we, call, uh, we test for pH, color, turbidity, alkalinity. We monitor our chlorine and fluoride residuals. And we use that information to help us. Um, so behind me, you can see there's all these taps of water running. Each one of those taps represents a process of the water from beginning to end. So all the way from the raw water to the distribution water. And we spend about an hour to two hours in here a day, depending on um, what we need to do. So we test and record all that data and send it off to the state and we use it for our own needs and making those process changes. So one of the main reasons we do our lab testing is to one for compliance and for letting us know what our treatment process are doing, but two, we also use them for our analyzers. So oftentimes we rely on our analyzers to give us data because we can't be in here testing the labs all day long. So what we'll do is we'll take our tests from our labs and then we'll calibrate or reset our analyzers so that we have 24 seven monitoring even when people aren't at the plant. And this is an example of a couple of our analyzers. So these read pH, our fluoride, our chlorine, and our turbidities. This is the area where we call our control room area. This is kind of where we overview the entire plant with, uh, on our computer system. So we're able to look at every process, make flow changes, chemical changes, um, watch our analyzers, uh, all at our computer. So this is a view of our control area. This is where we can overview all of our plant processes, like I said. So we have a, a lot of screens and they all give us some different information about our plant. And we also have the ability to look at our other well fields and all of our other surface treatment plants in our system right from here. So this is a very good tool for us and we use this a lot. So now we're actually outside at the back of our treatment plant and this is uh, our green roof. So this is a, a pretty large green roof. I think at one point it was one of the larger green roofs in the area, if not the largest. This has a lot of natural vegetation. It offsets some of the rainwater um, going into the river. And as you can see, it, it has these tubes sticking out. Those are our skylights, so those provide a lot, a lot of natural lighting. Um, we don't need to use electricity as much to provide lighting for our building. And in addition to all that, the green roof also provides some R value for insulation, so it can cut down on heating and cooling costs at the same time. So you've seen the water coming from the reservoir, coming into our plant, our DAF, ozone and filter processes. You've seen how we do our labs. You've seen how and where we do our paperwork and look at and watch over the plant during the day. And you saw our green roof. Uh, the last thing I like to show people on our tours is this uh, pretty interesting part of the building. And right now it just looks like a blank wall, but I'm gonna show you something pretty interesting here. So hold on. So this is what we call our viewing deck. This is a look outside into our green space area. Here we have a little park in front of the Whitney treatment plant. It has a little pond. As you can see, it has some trails. And this is open to the public. So people can come enjoy our area all year round. And that concludes the end of our tour. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you all learned something today. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.